So, I'm afraid guys, we're going to have to call time. Hey guys, MasterCoX here. Now that the future Trunks arc is all said and done, it's time to sit back and contemplate what we just watched. Personally, it was great to see Dragon Ball Super take a more sinister and edgier route, to a point where I really had no idea what the outcome would be. It kept me guessing. It kept making me think, wow, I can't really see a way out of this. Now, people might consider me naive or stupid, or in the case of one commenter, pleasuring Toei's appendage, but that's not the case. It's just, in general, I like to take a positive spin on things. I may have enjoyed this arc as a whole, but there were definitely points in it where I was not so enamoured. So let's talk about three of the best and three of the worst moments in this arc from my point of view. And I'm going to do something different with the worst aspects. Instead of just listing them off and just saying, Oh, these were really bad! I'm going to come up with a potential fix. So instead of just leaving it out there without leaving any kind of resolution, Let's try and patch things up. Let's get going. Number three, two heroes of time? Now I still think episode 67 was a good episode and it did the best it could considering with Zamasu, you know, corrupting the entire universe. That was a load to take in. However, one plot point that I really couldn't get over was the fact that Mayan Trunks were ultimately okay going to a future timeline where there was already a Mayan Trunks and one that wasn't really their world. They'd be doppelgangers and they'd be okay with it. If I were them, I'd be feeling supremely unfulfilled right now. Now I will hold my hands up and admit that that bit did not make a lick of sense. Now instead of Mayan Trunks going off to that future timeline, they could have just stayed in the current timeline, packed their bags and gone to live out in the sticks to live a quiet life, because Lord knows they deserve it. Because honestly, they are two great characters, and it would be great to see them in this current timeline, but then again, you have the whole two Mai's and two Trunks problem, albeit they're different generations. But really, I don't think that would work either, because Trunks would still feel that he failed his timeline, and that he wasn't the hero that he could have been. He would have been depressed, and that's not really a life to live. Perhaps going back to the future and working with that Whis and Beerus to fix the Zamasu problem is the best way, really, the most pragmatic solution. Number two. Trunks' new form. Now in my mind, I think it was great that Trunks got to Super Saiyan 2, because after all that training, if he hadn't got to Super Saiyan 2, then we'd have to talk about his training methods. But what I didn't appreciate was the lack of explanation about his new form. Is it some kind of hybrid form? Is he knocking on the door of Super Saiyan Blue? We just don't really know. It wasn't really explained. No elaboration was done. Trunks just accepted it and moved on. In fact, everybody did. What I would have appreciated was for Trunks to inquire to Whis what this form was, because I think he would have been surprised about it. I think anyone would have been surprised about it. Whis could have explained that, oh, that form? Oh, you're knocking on the door of Super Saiyan God. How about that? Whis could have shown him the way, or even Vegeta could have shown him how to do it. Could have trained in the time chamber with Vegeta to fully perfect the form and actually attain it. Ooh, maybe he could be struggling throughout the entire arc to actually get to it. Like, he's frustrated. He doesn't know how to actually do it. Just when you think all hope is lost and Zamasu's about to deal the last blow, he finally succeeds and goes Super Saiyan Blue and whomps Zamasu cleanly. Having that successful moment, having all that peril and build up, so finally cracking that form would have been great. The tide would have turned and the three Super Saiyan Blues would have worked together to stop Zamasu. Now that would have been better. Number one, Goku's forgetfulness and the whole Marfaba nonsense. This really got under my skin. Goku may not be the brightest spark out there, but this arc really took that character trait and beat it to death. I'm a Goku fan and even this got me angry and frustrated. It just seemed false and forced, like the writers couldn't think of a better idea and just used it for plot convenience. There were moments that this arc could have been wrapped up much sooner. For example, what if Goku actually brought the seal with him and remembered to take the urn out of the time machine before it got blasted? He could have used the Marfaba against Zamasu, he could have been sealed up for good, taken back to the present by Bulma in the time machine, locked away up in the lookout, and just left to be forgotten. Left to rot. Then Goku Black could have just been left to fend for himself against Goku, Trunks, and a riled up Vegeta. That Kamehameha, Gallic Gun, and Final Flash combined blast could have been used against him to wipe him off the face of the planet. Boom. Why did I start off with the worst? Well, I know that most of you are keen to see me lambast Dragon Ball Super in some shape or form, so I just thought I'd get it out of the way there and then. So now, let's get on with three of the best things of this arc. Starting with number three, Goku Black. 
Goku Black initially sounds like something that came out of a fanfiction, but its execution was a lot better than I thought it would be. Goku is innocence incarnate, whereas Goku Black is the complete opposite. With Zamasu inside of the Saiyan's body, it put a real tyrannical twist on proceedings. When you include all of the mystery that there was for the first half of the arc, weeks of guessing, weeks of speculating, it really added a nuance to the whole thing, which I really enjoyed. The fact it could get people talking is a big plus point. It's great to have discussion. It's great to have debate. That is healthy. Who was this guy? Is this Goku? Is this not Goku? Did someone take over his body? Is he being controlled by a higher power? We didn't know for a long time. Not to mention that Masako Nozawa, the voice of Goku Black, absolutely nailed her delivery. It allowed us to get immersed in Goku Black's dialogue. Zamasu may have been annoying, but Goku Black was nowhere near as annoying in my mind. All that justice-ridden dialogue got under my skin in a good way. And it was also mesmerizing that despite Goku being dead, his influence was still there. Goku Black was being permeated by the Saiyan's desire to get stronger and to fight all the time. All of Zamasu's plans were being nullified by Goku's desires. He was being corrupted. He was not the perfect god anymore. He was tainted by mortality. And that hypocrisy was so fun to see develop. Number two, the corruption of the gods. I've always felt off about the Supreme Kais. They lead a really decadent lifestyle and don't really do any hands-on work. They leave that to the Compass Kais and the Grand Kai. They can do all the heavy stuff, whereas they, they can just sit on their planet and just live a life of luxury. They can just sit back and watch life go about its business. When you add Zamasu into the mix though, you get an interesting thought. How many Supreme Kais are out there that think the same way? How many godly beings are so close to suddenly going insane and destroying mortality? How many are in exactly the same metaphysical quandary that Zamasu is? In a state where they look down on mortals and they really despise what they see. They just want to wipe it clean and start again in something of their own image. Zamasu's execution was far beyond the pale because really, the Supreme Kais are not supposed to do anything. I may get frustrated that the Supreme Kais seemingly apathetic view towards mortality but when you think about it they're supposed to not do anything they're just there to take the burden of mortality on their shoulders and really if you think about it that way no wonder they want to play all the time they want to get rid of their thoughts and just chill out every now and again the whole idea that the supreme kais are not as sane and perfect as we thought they were is enticing to me it excites me it just shows that not even gods are perfect and the fact that they acknowledge that they made mistakes with Goasu actually admitting that he made a bad decision and he will carry that mistake for the rest of his days. Wow, Goasu, you're pretty straight up. Number one, Mai. Mai is a badass. She is the MVP of this arc. She somehow managed to survive months of tyranny of Goku Black, terrorizing the planet, destroying it, changing it beyond recognition, wiping out civilization, and yet through all that, she is there with her trusty shotgun, with Yajirobe, and a few dozen survivors that she managed to keep alive. She even managed to form a decent sized militia. Even though these gods are insurmountably stronger than her, she will rock up with her gun, her army, her survivors, and still try her damn best because she has no other choice. In fact, her despair in episode 67 where she's just blasting in all directions, shooting in the sky for no reason, she's absolutely despaired and sad and just pouring her heart out. Her voice actress did a great job. That character was just, oh my God, that was just absolutely insane. I felt so bad for her in that moment. I felt so much empathy towards that character. She did the best that she could and she failed. She genuinely poured her soul out for everyone to see. She was done. She was absolutely broken. She's got balls. What if she successfully shot the Patara ring off Goku Black's ear, destroying it? There would have been no fusion. No other gods to steal Patara earrings off. Their fusion would have been completely nullified. Mai would have pulled off the impossible. That would have been great, but alas, we didn't get that. Good on you, Mai, for trying. I felt that this arc tried something that we'd never seen before. A Supreme Kai, beings that are supposedly perfect and infallible, just completely go insane and corrupt an entire universe. Nay, corrupt an entire timeline. Now, people may not have liked the fact that Goku just pressed the win button and Zeno showed up and cleaned everything up for them. I think that button is not something that's going to be used often, and there's a good reason for that. Remember, Goku doesn't like quick fixes, nor does he like receiving power that he didn't truly earn. 
the Super Saiyan God ritual anyone? I very much doubt that that button will be used again. Especially after the gang witnessed Zeno's completely irrational response. Goku just thought that Zeno would have destroyed Zamasu's gas cloud, but no! He is a childlike being. He doesn't do things in ounces. It's all or nothing. If it's something that displeases him, that is gone. All of it. Just completely gone. If he doesn't like it, boom. Done. You cannot abuse his services. If you do, you're going to end up with your timeline completely destroyed. I like that caveat. I like it a lot. Perhaps I'll explore it in another video. Now, I'll admit that the Future Trunks arc wasn't high art, nor was it eloquently written. But it did explore some very interesting things with Mai, Goku Black, and giving us more of Future Trunks, and especially giving in the last say about physical merge Zamasu. That scene at the end was still quite cathartic. Yes, the gang may not have won per se, but Zamasu turned himself into a giant sentient cloud that was impervious to energy blasts. That was beyond the Z-Warriors. Really, it was just best to use your friend in the highest of places. When all said and done, I'm glad that we got to see more of the Hero of Time. If I were to give this arc a grade, it would probably be either a B or a B-. minus. It's teetering on that spectrum. It had moments of dread, despair and drama, which I really think is refreshing in Dragon Ball. But the arc did have moments where it fell flat, with Goku's ineptitude, the inconsequential use of the Mafaba, and the lack of explanation with Trunks' form. If you fixed those things, it would have been a much better arc. Having said that though, this arc wasn't a disaster like most fans are dubbing it. If you compare this arc to something from Z, of course the fans are going to say that the Z arc was better. That's got support and nostalgia behind it, so that's going to win, no matter what you say. So what did you guys think? Do you think this arc could have been better? Did you like it the way it was? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Until the next one, catch you later.